And we take a deeper look now at the president's authority to declare a national emergency to fund that southern border wall with former Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta. He was the director of the Office of Management and Budget in the Clinton administration. He went on to serve as President Clinton's chief of staff. He joins us now from Monterey, California. Uh, Secretary Panetta, thank you for joining us again. First of all, do you think the president has the constitutional authority to declare a national emergency over this issue that he's concerned about, the southern border? Well, there, there's no question that presidents uh, have the authority to declare a national emergency. And when past presidents have used that authority, uh, both uh, the House and the Senate have gone along with it because they were legitimate national emergencies. Uh, in this case, uh, there's a lot of questions as to whether or not this constitutes a national emergency. Uh, if it was a national emergency, why didn't he declare it a national emergency last year when he was talking about the need for a wall? Uh, this year, looking at all the statistics, uh, the numbers of people coming across the border has gone down. Uh, the uh, enforcement has gone up. Uh, generally, it's a hard case to make that it constitutes the kind of a national emergency that would be able to support the president's move here. Who makes the determination of whether it's a legitimate national emergency? Who, where does that decision th come from? Well, the fact is that Congress has the first say. Uh, if there's a resolution that is raised in both the House and the Senate uh, to basically reject this declaration of emergency, uh, then Congress would have the first say. Uh, as to uh, whether or not it really constitutes uh, an emergency. Uh, but ultimately, the courts will have to decide whether indeed the president has this kind of power. Uh, look, uh, Judy, we're operating under a constitution that provides checks and balances. Uh, and those checks and balances are aimed at trying to limit the power of the president, the power of the Congress, the power of the courts. That's why our forefathers created it. Uh, a president who now uses a national emergency to bypass the will of Congress with regards to funding for a wall uh, is basically rejecting an important check and balance that was built into our Constitution. So you think that's what he's doing, uh, that he's going around Congress in effect? Absolutely. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, this, this issue has been fully debated. It was debated by a Republican House and Senate last year. Uh, the funds were not uh, fully provided uh, according to the president's wishes. It was debated this year in a Congress, uh, both the Democratic House now and a Republican Senate, fully debated. They agreed to come up with 1.3, uh, close to 1.4 billion uh, for the wall and about 55 miles as opposed to the number of miles that the president wanted. So Congress has, through its legislative process under the Constitution, come up with what it agreed should be funded here. That's why Congress has the power of the purse. Our forefathers created a Congress that has the right to appropriate funds. The president now is rejecting that and trying to go around that authority. I think that creates a major constitutional test here as to whether or not the president has the power to do what he's trying to do. Let me just ask you about the mechanics of this, though, Secretary Panetta. I mean, does the president have any power, purely executive power, to change, to take money, say, from that is supposed to go to the Defense Department for another purpose and move it to beefing up the southern border? Uh, there's no question that there's some authority uh, to make transfers of funds. Uh, there's some authority to try to reprogram funds. Uh, during the time when I was Secretary of Defense, uh, we made uh, efforts to reprogram funds, but we went to the congressional committees for their approval in order to be able to do that kind of reprogram. Uh, this president is talking about reprogramming and making transfers without any kind of, uh, of authority check with the Congress of the United States. Uh, I think that does violate the separation of powers. Secondly, the fact is that the president, in trying to exert this kind of authority, uh, is basically going to harm 
the very areas that he wants to support. He's talking about taking money from the Defense Department, uh, the uh, construction funds that uh, have been designated for the Defense Department, for our bases and for our men and women in uniform. To do that weakens his argument with regards to our national defense and furthermore, I think, hurts the Defense Department in terms of its role and what it's trying to do to basically create the kind of force that the president says we should have. So are you saying that there's no current legitimate pot of money somewhere in the government that the president could, could again, with his own executive authority, take and, and turn that money to a different or but related use on the southern border in order to beef it up, make it more secure? Well, there's, there's only three areas I can think of. Uh, one is this reprogramming. The other is the idea to transfer funds. The other is the possibility of using what are called forfeiture funds uh, to, to be able to provide some funds. Uh, but those forfeiture funds are not going to provide uh, the kind of money that the president wants in order to build a wall. Look, our system of government was built on the president. If he wants appropriated funds, you go to the Congress and you ask for those appropriated funds. You have to convince the Congress to give you the money that you're out for. But if you can't do it, if the Congress rejects that, uh, the president can't suddenly say, well, I didn't get my way, so I'm now going to go around the Constitution to find ways to fund it and get around the power of the purse. Uh, I think the courts are not going to allow this president to be able to bypass the Constitution on this issue. Just very quickly and finally, can you think of another instance uh, in your memory of a president trying to do something like this? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult, although uh, President Nixon, uh, during the time he was in office, tried to impound monies that were appropriated by the Congress. Uh, and uh, ultimately, the courts rejected that use of the impoundment authority, and as a matter of fact, the Congress then passed a law to make clear that that should never happen again. Uh, so when presidents have tried to go after uh, the power of the Congress to appropriate funds, uh, generally the courts have supported uh, the Congress with regards to the power of the purse. I think that's going to continue to be the case in the future. Well, talking to somebody who's been in Washington uh, going back several administrations, so former Secretary of Defense, former White House Chief of Staff, Leon Panetta, thank you very much. Thanks, Judy.